Okay. Good morning. So, uh, priority, prioritization. We've been on a. We, we're we're on the mystical path. We're on a journey. We're on this path to inner peace. This is a whole deal. This is a whole. This are. This really is the. This is the. Um, the purpose of everything that I do and everything that I teach and everything that I'm trying to learn is to establish inner peace. To establish inner peace that, that then can go forth and bless those around me with peace. So this is, we're all on this path. We're all on this mystical path. This, um, this, this inner experience that leads to an outer manifestation. And we, we have seen, <clears throat> in the past few weeks, we have seen that the surrender of the ego, the surrender of, of the uh, self-centeredness, the surrender of separation, actually gives us access to a power far greater than our own. We have seen that, um, that once we realize somebody else has already done this, and by the way, ancient practice, right? It's been going on forever. People have been doing this for, for throughout recorded history and probably before that. To take and go within, to have that inner experience so that they then can manifest in the outer. And once we realize that someone else has already done it, that gives some hope. That if, if they could, we could. We can also. And, uh, and that, that hope... Uh, translates after a while into faith. So it goes from the idea that maybe, perhaps, it could happen to being a probability and then a certainty. Because this is, and it's, I just want to say that it, it's already, um, in reality, it's already accomplished. We are already at the destination. We're just still looping around back here trying to clean up these details. So th then the idea of extending goodwill, the idea of aligning ourselves with goodwill. Um, I was looking at something this morning that was talking about um, This the idea of God, what God's will is, and uh, it's um, it's in the workbook companion, and uh, guilt is interference with goodwill. Guilt is interference with God's will. Most of us think that we're guilty because we've been not doing God's will. But guilt is actually interference with God's will. Guilt. The question this morning, the first question in the, in, the, in the lesson for Course in Miracles was, if guilt is hell, what is the opposite? And so you, someone would say, well, okay, if guilt is hell, what is the opposite? So, he, so we say heaven, this is the first thing that comes to mind. Heaven would be the opposite of hell. It's not quite... Not quite accurate, but we're on the we're on the right track. So heaven, as we well, it's, we're not talking about it as some heavenly uh, or some some in the sky on a cloud, <coughs> behind pearly gates kind of a deal. I mean, those are, those symbols those symbols could all be useful as long as we don't think it's literal. But we're talking about heaven as being the kingdom of unity, the kingdom of harmony, the kingdom of 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 everything being uh, connected and knowing it right. And uh, so, so this then, the kingdom of heaven, the opposite of hell, which hell is, well, here's what the Catholics always said, the, this, the Jesuits said, hell is separation from God. So, then, then we find out that God is everywhere present. So where could you go? 
where you could be separate. You could go into guilt. But we remember that's yours. That's your that's and it's not even real. It's a it's it's a it's a little prison that you build for yourself in a secret place in your mind. So so then then hell is separation from God, which would be the definition of self centeredness, isolation, separateness. You could think about it as being in a body. In, you can think about it actually that of, as hell as being in a body, thinking that you are alone in a body, in a world populated by other bodies who are in conflict with each other, who from time to time think, act like, and you believe that they are in alliance with you, but every day, every single day, even the closest person to you, you find some kind of conflict with them. If you look closely, no, don't look closely, but you could. You could. And that conflict is separation. And that separation is then some degree or form of hell. So we are going to align our will with goodwill, which goodwill, God's will, is what's best for everyone involved because we're all connected. So we're going for what's best for everyone involved, which includes us. We think that seeking and searching for, for just these individual things that we want are going to provide pleasure, and they do, in a way, shortly. Uh, but never as satisfying as we thought, and usually the tarnish, I say, I'm going to say, I'll, I, for me, the, 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 the shininess always tarnishes. So, then the next thing that we were talking about was the self-examination. We we're talking about the self-examination that leads to wisdom, and we and and we we ask some questions: Who am I mad at, and why? What do I regret, and why? What am I good at? What are my hopes and dreams? And uh, from answering these questions, I'm sure everybody did that. I mean, at least you did a little mental exercise about it. It's the why in the question that's really important, as we said last week, that um, the, the list of who's, they, they're interchangeable. And uh, even, when, you know, even when we think uh, uh, that we've, we've uh, taken care of all that, someone else will come along that we will be mad at. We will do something that we regret. And the, the individual circumstances are not important. It's the why we're upset about it. Why are we in guilt about it? Why are we in anger about it? And it was suggested then that we actually share that with a confidant of some kind. And that leads us to an understanding. Leads us to an understanding, and this is an inner condition, leads us to this understanding that, first of all, we're not alone. Leads us to an understanding that God is foundational. We start to get, at least at an intellectual level, we start, and, and hopefully at somewhat of an emotional level, we start to realize and feel <coughs> as if God is at the foundation, or I say, under, I understand that God stands under all. And also, we establish understanding with another person. This is kind of important. We receive understanding from the other person. We understand, and then we see that they are understanding us. Stephen Covey used to say, let me seek first to be understood. First, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, first to understand and then to be understood. So this is what we are looking for. And then, in, uh, and then today we're talking about this pr idea of priority. And what's the priority? If we're on a spiritual path, the priority must be something spiritual. It's, the priority has to be connected somehow to, this, to what we're doing on this spiritual path. And so we think about um, the, the, put first things first. Okay, now this is just a practical, just a practical thing. And again, Stephen Covey, it's one, of the, it's one of the seven habits of highly effective people. Put first things first. And so if you're just working in the material world, this is like a really valuable idea. You look at what's important. We, at the beginning of the year, we talked about roles and goals. You look at, your, at what your goals are. You look at uh, the, um, uh, 
what your particular uh, goals in each in each role is and you decide each day what's the most important thing that I can do to move forward on the path to achieving that goal but what we said was the most important goal was return to love the most important goal over in our overarching and above everything else the most important goal was return to oneness return to God and so that first then so in priorities we put if we say all right I'm gonna put I, my priority is I'm gonna put God first and some people that could be interpreted a whole bunch of different ways we think about it a couple of ways here think about God as being the unity of all life this is um, uh, the Aramaic word for God, which is the language that Jesus spoke, the Aramaic word for God, is unity. Now, they used it interchangeably, but it's, but it's meant uh, to, to be noticed that, this, that God means the unity of all life. That, that's, that was, it was implicit in the name, in the word that was used. So, so then, if we said prioritize we're on the spiritual path spiritual well, when I can put I'm going to put God first we could say I'm gonna put life first and we think about life as being that unified whole so in my mind I want to think and this leads me right back to this this whole idea of of the common welfare it, of, of realizing that what I want to do is I want to make take all of my efforts towards what's best for everybody involved. Because I put first things first, <coughs> life comes first. The unity of all life comes first. Harmony comes first. So I'm going to act in the common welfare. I'm not going to act in the common welfare because I feel like I want to be a martyr, because I want to sacrifice myself for the good of someone else, because there's no sacrifice involved in this. Because I am part of everybody involved. So what's best for everybody involved got to be best for me. Now, the problem is that we jump to sacrifice. We actually have a sense that we're going to lose something when we do this prioritization. We, think, we feel like we're going to lose this whatever bauble or whatever, whatever thing that, that we are looking for. We feel like if we, if we... Sometimes I'm afraid to pray for guidance because I know the guidance is going to be for what I don't want to do. Or it's going to be away from what I want to do. So I say, oh, no. I'm not praying. I'm just going forward. So, so if I, I, I want to get this in order, I want to get things in order, I'm going to say the first thing I'm going to start with, no matter what my other goals are, no matter what they may be, I want to start with this idea of put the common welfare first. So, put God first. In John, it says God is love. And this, we identify this with this very strongly. So here, somebody wrote this down on this piece of paper. It's very helpful for me right now. It says love is the pursuit. I didn't write this. It just showed up here on the piece of paper. It says love is the pursuit. So this is what we're after. And this is uh, Marianne Williamson's book, Return to Love. This is what we're pursuing, return to love, the love of unification, the love of harmony, the love of I feel connected to you and I desire only good to come to you, no matter what you said, no matter what you did, no matter what you didn't say, no matter what you didn't do. Love is the pursuit. Love is the purpose. Love is the reason. Love is the raison d'etre. Love is the inspiration. So this sense, this sense of connection, the sense of this, this, this real uh, heartfelt desire that only good come to life, come to everyone. And love is the integration. Love is the coming together. That's very nice. Thank, whoever wrote that, thank you very much. It's nice that things just show up here on my thing. It's so helpful. It's helpful. So I want to put things in order. I want to... Um, in this particular, I, I've become aware through, through looking, doing the self-examination, talking to someone else about these things, I've become aware of a few problems. I've become aware of a few tendencies that, that I have 
that in order for me to continue on the spiritual path, I have to deal with in some way. One of the problems that I discover is that I'm not just looking at love like this. What I'm looking at love is, I'm looking at love as, as long as you act the way I want you to act, then I'm going to give you my approval and my affection. If you don't, I won't. Or somehow, I mean, I may not be that blatant about it. I may be subtle. I may be, I may be passive aggressive with it. But it's one way or another, I'm, if you don't go along with my program the way I see it, if you don't act the way I think you ought to act, then even if it's just a small little place in the back of my mind, I'm having some judgment against you. This morning I sent out the, the tweet that I sent out, the, the, the one spirit tweet, and I, some people got the message. I said, uh, judging others, I find myself guilty. I find myself in hell, according to the lesson for today. So I have this, I have a tendency that is a tendency of the ego. It's a tendency of the ego to expect people to be what we want them to be, to act like we want them to act. And then we, we give them some sort of, we give them some sort of reward. We call it love, but it's not because it's conditional. And the other side of that is this unconditional state of being, this unconditional extension of love, sense of connection, desire for only good to come. This is where we want to go. So this prioritization says, let me get somewhere in me. There is a much stronger desire for this connection than there is for this judgment. So let me put, at least in my mind, let me get the priority correct that I want to get unconditional love in front of this judgment. I find in when I do the inventory that from time to time I will be envious of others. I will, I will see that someone else is having some good fortune. And maybe because I'm having a bad streak or maybe just because I'm petty, I think something like they don't deserve that. I may even go so far as to say, I should have it, right? I remember very clearly uh, I, when things were, had finally just uh, started to turn around for me, I still had, I wanted things to, um, I, I wanted material things to come right away, and I can remember driving down the street and seeing somebody in a nice car, and I would think, I would wish that I had that car. That poor person could have been walking. I didn't care. I'd be, I have their car, right? I see a nice house on the hill. I want that house. That, that, that family could be out in the street as far as I was concerned. I'm having that house, right? So, this, um, so to prioritize things, what I want to do is I want to get to the point where in my mind I can be happy for the happiness of others. To actually take joy in someone else's accomplishments. It's so easy to do. We don't even realize that it's envy a lot of times. What happens is we'll see something, a, a newspaper story or, or something on uh, television where s someone had this accomplishment, and we'll have some judgment about them or their type of people in our minds, and we immediately go to that idea that they don't really deserve that, or there's something about them that we would say they don't deserve it. So... So then uh, we also have, I found in myself that from time to time, I will be just walking along, minding my own business, and a fantasy will come into my mind, and it will say, well, if only I had this much money. If only I had that job. If only I had that particular situation. If only I'd win the lotto, then everything would be all right. But, uh, and you know, I've told this story quite a few times and people have heard it a number of times, but here's the thing about it. That we know, first of all, it's not true. Everything's not going to be all right. That's the first thing. It's not going to be all right. We think it's going to be all right. And, uh, but the, just the, the, the lottery example is uh, it, it, there's some studies that are already done on that, and people that win the lotto, generally speaking, don't do that well. 
the vast majority end up in deeper debt after they won the lotto than they were before they did. And I know, I know you're saying, oh yeah, well just let me get that lotto. Just let me get it. I'll show you that it can be right. Well, that may be true, but the majority is not true. The problem is when we get something that we're not prepared for and that we think deep within us that we haven't earned, it's really easy to throw it away. So, to prioritize things, let me be grateful for what I have. Let me get my gratitude first. Let me say, oh man, you know what? Things really are good. Look at Things really are good. And I like, with gratitude, I want to say that I don't think gratitude is an exercise of me saying, look what I have that other people don't. I really, I do not want to feel good about having things and at the expense of someone else. I don't want to be grateful for, for, uh, for having something because I can compare the lack that someone else has. So first, with gratitude for me, this idea of gratitude has to begin with just being grateful for life. Just being grateful for life. Let's, start, let's get to the core of it. I'm be grateful for life. I'm going to be grateful for the fact that even though my mind is arguing against it, we're all connected. There's nothing to fear, right? Here's the next thing that I found. I found that when the thing that I wanted, that I said, if only I would get this or that or the other thing, came to me, it wasn't enough. And the common term is greed. Greed is a hole inside of us that is caused directly caused by the hell 